Welcome, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. Last week I showed you how I designed this modern hexagon quilt using Electric Quilt 8. I had a stash of ombre fabrics and I had some time to actually do some quilting with some friends last weekend. And so I decided to make my modern hexagon quilt. In this video, I'm going to share with you the major steps of the process and how I did that. I'm going to start with a two and a half inch piece of the fabric and I want to put the wrong sides on top and then I'm going to take the hexagon template and center it. Now at the place where we've got the points facing the outside edge of the um, fabric, that's where I want to start. So I'm going to take the hexagon and the fabric and I'm going to fold a crease along the first edge. And I'm going to work counterclockwise and I'm going to fold a crease over the second edge. And you can maybe see that I've got that uh, very sharp corner. Then I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to sew from the second crease to the first, essentially sewing through that corner. And I'm going to leave about a one inch tail and then I'm going to go back and sew a second uh, stitch over that same corner. And that will give me um, a little bit of uh, hold there. Then I'm going to go to the next corner, make sure I've got a strong crease against that fabric, against that template, and then I'm going to fold down the next edge, put my thumb to hold it in place, and sew from the last folded edge to the previous one, securing that corner, Repeat this process for the remaining corners. I found my first few were fairly awkward, but it actually goes pretty fast after you get used to the, uh, the hand movement on this. And once I've done the last corner, I'm gonna go back to the first one and do one more stitch just to secure everything. And I'm going to do a little bit of a tug to tighten everything up and then I will cut about uh, an inch away and I have now basted my hexagon. Once your hexagons are basted go ahead and iron them and that's going to set those creases. Go ahead and snip at that corner where we started and then use a little bit of a tug and pull out the basting thread. Remove the template and now we're ready to attach this to the background. On the home screen of my Modern Hexagons project I'm going to view the project sketchbook and on the quilts tab take the quilt that I designed during that last blog post and select edit. I'm going to make a note of the size which it's 21.875 times 22.236. And I am going to then do a quilt add to sketchbook as photo. Then I will do a new quilt, horizontal. For the layout, I will select a one by one layout and I'm going to make the size 21.875 by 22.236. Go to the border tab and delete the border. Then go to the design tab, select photo tools at the top and select set photo. And scroll and find the uh, photo that we just saved and click on the quilt. Select print and export. Click on the uh, block, which is actually the photo of the full quilt and select photo. 
Now under photo size we want to use the size from the quilt. If you need to adjust any settings or select a different printer you can go to page setup. Otherwise go ahead and just do a preview. Go ahead and print out the backdrop. Use the guidelines to trim and to put the pieces together and now I have a backdrop that I can use for placement of all of my hexagons. Here is my printed off photo and now what I will do is put my background fabric on top and I will place my hexagons on top of that. Okay, I forgot to film this while I was actually working on the project, but using that guide that I've actually now thrown away, I would place my hexagons on my fabric. And then what I'm going to do is use a, a fabric fusion glue. And this has a really big tip, which would give me a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of glue on each piece. So I actually transferred this to um, a smaller bottle that has a really narrow tip. And I just uh, this, I just got this on Amazon. So I'll, I'll post a link for that if anybody is interested. But basically we're just looking for a bottle with a narrow tip. Now, what I've done is on the back side, I have um, squeezed my glue. I wanna make sure that I've got the corners and I've got dots along the edge. And then um, I'd again still be using my placement guide. I would um, press this on the fabric. Note that this is permanent glue and it does suggest that we let it dry for two to four hours. So once everything is placed, what I'm going to do is put both backing and batting. And I'm going to sew um, basically through all of the corners. When quilting, you're going to want to extend the lines to the edge of the background fabric. I actually cut my background fabric a little bit extra and then did a trim down after I was through with all of these uh, quilting. For additional tips and techniques, please feel free to subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com.